Uh, here's an application that you may get a kick out of. It actually involves aviation, so flying and so forth. I actually fly. And you know, if you're taking, um, if you have a small plane, you know, a small plane has a little prop in front. You can sort of see it. And when you come in for a landing, you know, in fact, the, you know, this thing interesting because I do fly. The hardest part about flying is the landing. Everything else is a piece of cake. It's so easy to take off. There's no thinking involved. Flying, once you're up in the sky, it's absolutely trivial. There's nothing to it. But landing, let me tell you, when you have a plane coming down and it gets close to the ground, which is very hard, that's scary. And that's actually very hard. And in fact, let me tell you why. Because if you come down and you see, if you go too slowly, then your plane actually is what's called stalls. It doesn't mean that the engine breaks, but it's that you lose all the lift from your plane, and then you, you sort of land. So that's not good, OK? On the other hand, if you're coming down too fast, you see, if you're coming down too fast, then you, you sort of keep going, and you might get to the end of the runway, and then you know, you're in trouble that way too. So you actually have to find that right landing speed, right? The right landing speed. You don't want it to be too slow. You don't want to stall out. And on the other hand, you don't want it to be too fast and just keep going, you know, right into the snack bar, into the, into, the, um, into the airport. So what you have to do is you have to find the right landing speed. So here's a faked question about that. Let's take a look. OK, so you're in a small plane, and you have to determine the appropriate landing speed. And just like I said, it requires basically the speed versus the length of the runway. If you know the length of the runway, you, have, you can then figure out what the right speed should be. OK, and if s is the initial landing speed in feet per second, let's say, and L is the length of the runway, then for this particular plane, and this is not, this formula is not true for all planes. In fact, this formula is not true for any plane. This is a FACO. But anyway, it would be L, in this case, it's L equals 0.1 S squared minus 3S plus 22. So let me recap uh, what that means. So L is the length of the runway needed. So notice that if you come in very, very, very fast, S is the speed now of your initial landing. If this is a very big number, then in fact the amount of runway you need would actually be large as well. Okay? You need a lot of room if you're going to come in really, really fast. If this is going to be a smaller number, then in fact you need less runway. On the other hand, you just can't come in any old tiny speed because like I said, you could you know, easily just fall. So you have to be careful. So now the question is, suppose we have an 800 foot long runway which actually is reasonable. The question is, what would the appropriate initial landing speed be for that? So what I want to find out is, what's the right s to put in here? What's the right initial landing speed? So that, in fact, this number would produce 800, since that would be the, the amount of runway space I have. So what would I do? Well, I'd set up an equation. And the equation would sound like this. And, I, and look like this if you're going to watch it or if you're listening to it. 0.1s squared minus 3s plus 22. And that would have to equal 800, 800 feet. In fact, those are the units. OK, well, now I want to solve this equation. Well, this is a quadratic equation in s. And so, in fact, what I would try to do is bring everything over to one side and blah, 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 blah. Um, we can do that. I'll tell you something that I just personally, um, this point one, I have to admit, sort of gives me a little bit of the willies. You know, it's just, it's fine. If you like point ones, that's fine. But if not, you could think of that as 1 over 10. And then you could sort of multiply everything through, both sides, this side and that side, by 10. That would clear the denominator here, and I would just have an s squared. Of course, there's a price you pay for that. I pick up a factor of 10 here, here, and here. But actually, I'd prefer to do that. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I'm going to multiply everything through by 10, just to clear all that uh, point 0.1 thing. And then I would see s squared minus 30s plus 220. You see how everything got increased by a factor of 10? And then I have that equals 8,000. It's the exact same quadratic, but now I don't have the point 0.1 there. And I like it better. Maybe you don't, and then you shouldn't do that. Anyway, OK, well, now I've got to bring this 8,000 over to this side. Because um, remember, I want a quadratic to solve, so I want to have everything equal to 0. So I bring this over, it becomes a minus 8,000. So I'd see an s squared minus 30s. And then I have a minus 8,000, but then I add a 220. So that's a net loss negative of 7,780. And that all equals 0. OK, well, now we can try to factor that, if you dare. Tump, tump. I need two numbers that multiply to give 7,780, but combine to give 30. This seems way too obscene, way too obscenely large compared to these coefficients. And so I'm not even going to bother to try to factor this. You can if you're more young and optimistic than I am. But I'm going to immediately jump to the quadratic formula, since I think this is what is going to be required here. So the quadratic formula, of course, you can see it there. It's that, in this case, s 
equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And those roles are clear. The role of a is just this invisible 1. b is going to be negative 30. Don't forget that negative sign. And c is going to be this negative 7,780. OK, well, now if we insert, we see that s equals negative b. So that's negative negative 30. So that's actually a positive 30 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So I have to have minus 30 squared minus 4 times ac, which is 1 times 7,780. But there's a negative sign here. So that's a negative 7,780, which when I multiply by this negative makes that a positive. So I have that huge thing, all divided by 2a. So that's just 2. What sign do I want? Well, you'll notice I have two signs here. I've got the plus and the minus. Now, you can actually compute this on a calculator if you want, or you can just think about it for a second. This is going to be basically 30 squared, and then I'm adding stuff to it. So the square root of that is actually going to exceed 30. So this number here is some number much bigger than 30. So 30 minus a number bigger than 30 would be negative. Divided by 2 is negative, and that would give me a negative speed. That means I have to somehow run my plane backwards, which you cannot do, by the way. You think, maybe I should just run the propeller the wrong way. If you run the propeller the wrong way, you don't even think of doing that. So, so that's actually going to be my extraneous root here. I can't have a negative answer. So therefore, it must be the positive answer. So the answer must be 30 plus this square root all over 2. And you can just take a calculator if you want. And beep, 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 beep. Sounds like I'm making a call on the cellular phone, isn't it? Beep, 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 beep. Hello, mom. No, but it's really a calculator, but the same sound effect. And it turns out if you work this out and just compute it, you get around 104.47 feet. I'm sorry, uh, feet per second. So in fact, my units here are feet per second. So this is the speed I should be traveling, 104.47 feet per second, in order to make my 800-foot runway. All I did was take this fact, set it equal to 800, and then just solved using the quadratic formula. Very direct and, unfortunately, somewhat faked example using the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic word problem. Try these on your own and see what you think.